Hi and welcome back to the photographycourse.net YouTube channel. In this video I want to talk to you about the different aspects of photography that affect the depth of field in a photograph. A lot of people think about the depth of field as how blurred the background is, but there's actually quite a bit more to it than that. The depth of field in a photograph is the distance between the closest point to the camera and the point furthest away from the camera that is acceptably sharp. In any photo you can have a great variety in how much depth of field you've got depending on a number of different factors and I'm going to talk to you about those in this video. The key thing that most people know about with depth of field is the aperture opening in the lens. When you've got a very wide aperture opening, you're going to let a lot of light come into the lens and also there's going to be a very shallow depth of field. So that area that you've got in focus is very narrow. When you're using a very small aperture, so a higher f-stop number, your depth of field is going to be deeper. You're going to get more that's acceptably sharp than you will when you're using a wider aperture or even a medium aperture. This goes for any lens that you're using on any camera. The actual amount does vary depending on the focal length of the lens. So on this lens, it's a 24 to 120 millimeter lens. At say f8, at 24 millimeters, you're going to have more that appears to be in focus than if you're at f8 at 120 millimeters or 80 millimeters or 50 millimeters. So the wider the lens you use, the appearance of depth of field at any given aperture is going to be greater. Now another key factor that affects depth of field is how close you are to your subject. When you're taking landscape photos and your subject is way off in the distance or that you're capturing a broad vista that's farther away from you, then you're going to get a deeper depth of field no matter what lens or what aperture you're using on that lens because your focus point is further away from the camera. If you've ever done any macro photography, you know that the exact opposite comes into play here. When you're focusing very close to something, you get a very, very shallow depth of field. You need to use a much narrower aperture to achieve the same depth of field. So when you're focused in close, your depth of field just pretty much shrinks. It shrivels up and becomes next to nothing, even at really narrow apertures, say f11, f16 or f22, you're going to get very little in focus if you're extremely close to your subject. So think about this too, how far away is your subject and how much depth of field? For instance, if you're taking a portrait and you want to blur the background, come a little bit closer to your subject and that way you're going to be able to get a more blurred background. The other thing in this situation too is to move your subject further from the background. So if your background's way in the distance, of course it's going to be more blurred than if it's closer to your subject. And one other key element of depth of field is the size of the sensor in your camera. So the larger your sensor, the shallower the depth of field you will be able to achieve. So if you're using your phone to take photos, you'll notice that it's actually really quite challenging to get a shallow depth of field and to get a nice blurred background when you're using your phone. This is because two reasons, because the sensor in the phone is so small and generally phones have fairly wide angle lenses so they give the appearance that the depth of field is deeper. Keep in mind that there's aperture, there's focal length, there's distance from the camera to the subject and the subject to the background and there's also the size of the sensor and these things all affect the depth of field. Thanks for watching, I hope you've learned something in this video. If you have, give us a thumbs up and click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can stay up to date each time we release new videos.